And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Ahoy me hearties, welcome aboard the Buccaneers ship of knowledge and passion. Ye be listening to the one and only RBLR Bucks podcast. I am Usab, your trusted co-host and navigator on this treacherous sea of Buccaneers adventures. A vast Buccaneers nation, it be true that we've sailed through stormy waters with a tough loss against the Lions, but as any true pirate knows, we don't dwell on past battles lost. We chart a new course toward victory. And that next treasure chest, me mateys, is the week seven matchup against the fierce division foe, the Falcons. But worry not, for we're not alone in this journey. Hoist the colors high, for I be joined by me trusty shipmates who will help us navigate these tumultuous seas. Let me introduce you to uh, let me ju- let me introduce ye to the scallywags that'll be with us through thick and thin. Unfurling the sails and ready to bring the passion from all corners of the globe to our ship. It's Captain Zach Blaine. What's going on, Zach? Oh, I don't know at this point, man. I wish I had more for you. I can't even think straight right now. Oh, that was awesome, man. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, all right, I'm on, dude. No, it's all good, man. It's Ooh. all good because steering the helm of the ship as we speak while looking for any Falcon fans in the Gulf, folks, it's Captain Carter Brentley. Carter, what's oh, going on, man? Oh, nothing much, man. Just chilling. Um, I feel like a real swashbuckling pirate right now, you know, after that intro. As you um, should. It, right, right, as I should. Um, I don't know if I should, I don't know. It was a tough week for the Bucks. You know, they, they took a pretty a pretty rough loss um, against the Lions. The Lions, they look really good right now. I mean, Jared Goff is a borderline MVP candidate. And, uh, you know, the Bucks just couldn't get anything going offensively, and they lost 20-6, to six, unfortunately. You're not going to win too many football games scoring six points. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was just a tough loss, but, um, I'm happy, I'm happy to be here with y'all talking some Bucks football. Definitely excited to get this show on the road as the kids say. Um, so well, you know, it was an ugly loss. Do you have, do you have any initial thoughts or any initial reactions? Just well, I'll, I'll, I'll say some- this Carter. It was honestly crazy for us, I guess, to believe that we could wear creamsicle jerseys <laughs> and get a win Stay at the well. same time. It right. seems like history has taught us nothing. Yeah, I mean, you either learn from history or you're doomed to repeat it, as they say. Um, so, yeah, I, that's that's unfortunately the case here. Zach, how about you? You got anything? Yeah, no, it's it's the same thing, I guess. It's like I, I was uh, – the creamsicle jerseys look sick, but I was talking to Michaela about it, and she's like, those look so cool. I said, yeah, I don't like them. Well, why not? I said, well, because there's just not a good history of, with those jerseys. Like, it was, there was nothing good that happened when we wore those. I'd rather wear something else and just be different. But, I mean, outside of that, I think the biggest takeaway from this is it's going to sound real bad, but some of us Bucks fans just, like, we turn on some of our players so quick. Like, one bad game, and on Baker, you see it on Twitter. What? 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 Man, you got to be the biggest Rashad White hater I've known, and you talk about I've, turning on players. I've always been a hater. Oh, stop I've it. always oh, been a hater. Dude. I've always been a hypocrite. Uh, it, it's, I guess it, for me, it's more so like the first three games of the season. Everyone's like, oh, man, Baker's impressing me. Baker's, he could be the answer long term. And then he has one bad game where, like, I've seen it on Twitter where we're like, he's, he's trash. He needs to be gone. Start trash. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what? Four out of five games is a pretty solid resume so far. Like, I'm not mad about it. That's yeah, my no. biggest takeaway. For sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's the what have you done for me lately thing. Exactly. Um, like in baseball, like if you listen to Dodgers fans, then Clayton Kershaw is one of the worst pitchers in baseball. You know, so it's it's a very, you know, people are very quick to turn on a yeah. dime, myself included. I'm I'm no 
I'm guilty of that myself sometimes. Um, I think we all can be. Um, but, you know, regardless of what happened in the game, I think that there were some good things that the Bucks did. We're going to do a little bit of a good, the bad, and the ugly segment right here just because, you know, there's a lot of bad and ugly for sure, but there was also some good, I, and I want to focus on that as well. Um, so my, my first initial um, good, just to start things off, is Luka Decky. That guy looks really good at the right tackle position. It's fantastic. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Um, all the positive adjectives, just throwing out that. Um, so I was really excited about Luke Decky. Yes, Mr. Blaine, you have your hand raised. Didn't I tell you with that position switch, he's a lot better than last year? <laughs> hey, you did. I, d- I doubted it, but you did. Um, so that's my good. The Luke Decky story has been really, really nice this season. Musab, what about you? What's your What's your good from this past week? I mean, there's only a couple of goods, I guess. Uh, for right. me, um, yeah, really happy to see what Lou Gadecki was able to do because I had mentioned it, I think, last week as well with the with the matchup between him and Aiden Hutchinson, who was an absolute beast, only limiting him to, like, one pressure this game. But for me, uh, honestly, I really like seeing Kalaja Kansi on the field, you know, racked up a sack, yeah. applied some pressure here and there. So, I mean, with an ugly game like that, you know um, – I guess that was one of the little hidden gems that I was able to find. Absolutely. That's that's a Musab standard. You got to trademark that phrase right there. Uh-huh. Uh, hidden gem. Um, Zach, how about you? What's your good from this past week? And you can't say Baker Mayfield. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say Baker Mayfield. <laughs> um, no, I think that the good from this past week is uh, it, it's kind of a uh, cop out to say it, but just the continued growth of Tristan Wirfs at left tackle. Like he is just slowly showing that he is a freak of nature and his ability to switch positions and still perform at the top is mind blowing to me. Yeah, it's really, really impressive. Um, And it's nice that the Bucks have these two kind of bookend tackles right now, Gadecki and Wirfs. Um, I think it was a bit a position that was a bit up in the air coming into this season just because it was a new position for Tristan and, you know, Gadecki had been so bad at left guard that there was kind of a doubt as to what he was going to be able to do at right tackle. So it's been really nice. Um, I I also would be remiss if I did not mention Levante David as well for this category because he was really good this past week. He had a couple of really intense pass breakups. Um, He also managed to make some really nice open field tackles. And, you know, he's just continuing to be Levante David, and that's really all there is to say. Um, But, of course, with the good, there's also the bad. And um, there's a lot of it, but there's also the ugly. So I don't necessarily want y'all to go full bore on on necessarily, you know, crapping on the bucks. Um, But there was a lot of bad and there was a lot of ugly. So we'll start with the bad. Zach, what, what was your bad from this game? Oh, I hate to say it, but Ryan Neal. Mm, uh, he was. Yeah, yeah, he just he's he's been playing pretty solid lately, and just the Lions game, it's like something clicked for him, and he said, "Nah, I'm good. I don't want to play good anymore." And it, it just showed, like that touchdown pass to uh, was James it Williams? Williams. Yeah. Uh, he just got beat. I mean, yeah, he he recovered true. nicely. He still got there, but, but for bad. you to get beat that bad, I mean, th- he's my bad for this week. Yeah, and, and in Neil's defense, Williams is really fast. I mean, he's one of the fastest guys in the in the in the NFL. But like you said, to get beat that bad and to just you know, you got to know your personnel, know the guys you're playing against. Williams is a burner, and um, yeah, to see him get beat that bad was rough. Uh, Musab, how about you? What's your bad for this past week? My bad was basically not limiting the mistakes. Uh, for me, that was one of the key things for us to you know succeed in winning against the Lions, and we saw that on both ends. As Zach mentioned already with Brian Neal, I mean, we were overall kind of looking really sloppy, especially on the kind of third downs as well. We were just getting so beat up, you know, with the defense being on the field like 80% of the time. But then, again, on the offense, um, unfortunately, yeah, Baker just made a lot of mistakes. Run game was crap, but, I mean, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, uh, so, about that for the ugly section. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but it's just it's just the fact that we weren't limiting the mistakes. It was just kind of sloppy on both ends. You know, this battle was supposed to kind of come down to the trenches, and the fact that we were only able to rack up six points is embarrassing. 
Yeah, that's uh, that's a good way of putting it. Embarrassing. Um, I think my bad for the week is going to be the lack of takeaways from the defense. Um, I know that's not – they didn't play poorly. They only gave up 20 points, which sounds like a lot. But the Lions offense is really good. And, you know, even – you're not going to win a lot of games scoring six points. So the defense is not to blame. But they also – you know, they could have pushed the envelope a little bit. Um, you know, the, they just they looked a little out of sorts, uh, to be quite honest, which is to be expected. Like I said, the Lions are a really good offensive team. Um, but it was it was kind of discouraging to see them not come up with any turnovers, you know, any game changing plays. Um, so that was that was a little bit of my bad. Um, but now it brings us to the ugly um, that there's a lot of ugly. Um, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I, I want to hear. I want to hear Musab. What's your ugly? Because I know we kind of mentioned it a little bit in the bad, but what's your ugly from this past week? My ugly is first of all uh, the run game. Just the fact that it's whenever we wanted to do something, when it comes to the run game, we were able to do nothing. Rashad White, Keyshawn Vaughn, yep. uh, just <laughs> yeah, yep, indeed. Because, listen, I, I do want to think about, okay, hey, listen, offensive line is a factor. I'm sure I've mentioned this before as well, but I'm also not seeing kind of any, what's that word, ambition from our running backs to do something other than just kind of run it down the middle or just kind of sit there and wait for the hole to open up for them, you know? So uh, that's it for me, at least when it comes to the ugly running game. But what was ugly is just the fact that, Basically, whenever, yeah, as I said already, whenever we wanted to kind of get into the air, we would shift to the run. And then whenever we wanted to pick up a yard or two and extend the drive, we would go for a deep ball. So that was kind of something really a little bit confusing to me as to why the hell we were doing it. But yeah, I'll get off my soapbox as of right now and pass the mic along to Zach. I'm sure he has some words, at least in regards to our run game, for sure. Yeah, I mean it's atrocious. Like I've I've said it on Twitter, and I'll say it a million times. This offense will not be able to do anything with the run game that we have now. You cannot pass the ball without the threat of running the ball. And right now, our leading running back is averaging three point three yards a carry. That's just that's not going to be. That doesn't scare anybody. No one's. They, at this point, they could rush four guys and play coverage with everyone else, and it, there's nothing to worry about. So I just I feel that it's not going to – the system that Canales wants to run, you have to have an adequate running back. And, I look, I, I want the best for Rashad White. I just do not think that he is capable of being an RB1, and I stand by it. I've said it from day one. I'll say it until he proves me wrong, and at this point, I don't think he's going to prove me wrong. It's embarrassing, yeah, when we have to throw a fade route on a third and one. You know, it's kind of a crazy call because it kind of means that we really don't trust our run game. And, and as you mentioned already, Zach, no one respects our run game. So Exactly, and that's yeah. that's the problem. And like I said, I know we've had issues with Baker and the overthrows. Like, I'm not saying that Baker played a perfect game or even a good game. I think he played a below-average game this week. But when, when you're – essentially having to throw the ball on three downs to get anything done. It, they're allowed to play better coverage and take out the overthrows. Like, obviously I'm not saying take out the overthrows and forget that Baker didn't have a great game, but take out the overthrows. And even with that, I don't think we would have won that without those overthrows. I don't think we would have won this game because they were able to play pass coverage defense all game. Yeah. Uh, these are all very fair points. Um, definitely not going to, the running game sucks. Um, it's awful. Yeah. It's putrid. It's not good. Uh, the worst in football by far. Um, and that's the second consecutive year. Uh, clearly nothing has changed. And, um, you know, that that's tough to see. And you're not going to be a very successful football team if this trend continues. Um, so, yeah, that's obviously a great ugly. I got to go at it from a different angle. Maybe uh, Canalis's play calling was tough this past week it was kind of the first because there was some momentum the first few weeks of oh dave canal is going to get head coaching interviews like he could be the bears head coach next year and it was kind of like this game was kind of a reminder hey this is his first year being an offensive coordinator like let's let's chill out for a second um so i thought this was kind of a, a sobering reminder of 
I don't want to say his inexperience, but maybe, you know, maybe a little bit of just kind of still getting his feet wet as a play caller. Um, so I thought that was a, it was a tough thing. I mean, you mentioned the fade route on third and one that was brutal. Um, and it was weird. All the, the deep balls on short yarded situations. It was really strange. Um, and I know that Baker overthrew them and I know that was ugly and I'm, I'm with you. I feel you, but it, it, it feels like they, they shouldn't be put into that situation to begin with. Like it, it shouldn't be that. Exactly. That now, uh, a follow-up question for you. It, do you think that the lack of a running game is dictating kind of what Canales has to call? Right. I mean, that's a great point. Like if, if the Bucks were running the ball even moderately well, even if they were like a slightly below average running game as opposed to the worst running game in football, um, yeah, he might be able to be a little bit looser with his play calling. But um, as it stands right now, that's not going to change. Um, I don't know that there's a viable solution right now um, because, you know, the, I, I hate I hate to cop out Rashad White because I don't I'm not trying to defend him. I'm not trying to defend Keyshawn Vaughn. They're mm-hmm. both very below average running backs. But I, I don't know that you bring in someone like I know that a big name right now is Derrick Henry because the Titans have been bad. Um, and he, he's been linked to the Bucks. I know there was a CBS report saying that the Bucks could trade a third round pick for him, which we'll get into that as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, but I don't know that he does that much better um, just because when you're dealing with Cody Malk, uh, Robert Hainsey, um, those two guys are, are two of the worst at their positions in football. And they're, 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 when the interior of the offensive line is that bad, you're not going to run the ball very well. Um, regardless of who's back there. So I, I don't know that Henry is going to be the answer, um, but that's going to be our next topic. So we'll lead right into it. Um, what's the maximum kind of draft pick total? It, I, I mean, it, it, it was this is a very recent thing. That's kind of a recent development that I saw. So I wanted to include it in the show. And and I got to I got to be honest, I don't think you give up more than a fifth or a fourth round pick for Derrick Henry. Zach, I'm sure you might disagree, but Musab, we'll start with you since you're kind of <laughs> the crown. Uh, so, Musab, what's the maximum draft pick that you'd give up for Derrick Henry at this point? Oh, man. Um, Max, I'll probably go. You know what? I say we kind of get a little bit of risky, I guess, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll throw in a third round just because. Okay. Um, I think it's worth the risk, but I don't know. Honestly, I've started to become quite pessimistic with our run game. I'm hoping that maybe we prioritize this in the future with our draft. And that's why I'm thinking, fine, let's go third round, maybe fourth round. I think, yeah, for sure. Cause I think this is something we're definitely going to have to focus on and something we've been lacking on, you know, in the past, I feel like, uh, our coaching staff and our office haven't made the right picks when it comes to getting the best running backs or drafting the best running backs. Uh, so that's about it for me. Okay. Yeah. Third round pick is fair. You know, I, I think you maybe would be willing to, to bump up a little bit, but um, it's tough because he's a free agent after this year. So you're essentially paying for a rental. Um, I don't think mm-hmm. the Bucks can afford to bring him back um, after this season. Um, so it's a bit tough to, to spend, you know, to give up a lot of draft capital for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, third round seems to be the kind of the consensus as to what he'll get if he is indeed traded. Um, Zach, I know you're frothing at the mouth to get Derrick Henry. So what? Or, Listen, tell me you trade a first round pick, please. I'm, I'm no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not unrealistic here. Okay, oh, okay. I would trade three first round picks. Silly, like come on. Right. <laughs> no, honestly, I would trade probably a third, but I would also add like a sixth or a seventh in there with it just as a sweetener and shit it or shoot sorry if we have to uh add rashad white i wouldn't be upset you know <laughs> like, <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I think i think if they trade for derrick henry and convert rashad white more into a third down guy or receiving back i think that could be really beneficial for him and the offense i think that could be really fun i don't um, disagree with that i think he would be a good third down back but For I also sure. think that Derrick Henry is a three down back and that's kind of the issue there. Yeah, I just I don't know if if you truly want Derrick Henry to be successful, try to limit the tread on his tires. Okay. I do think that maybe having a second guy come in, you know, for pass blocking, you know, pass protection. No one wants Derrick Henry to have, you know, God forbid, like really have a serious injury because he was yeah. out there for pass protection. Like that's just 
that's not good. <laughs> you know, that's and that's totally fair. I, I I don't disagree with you on that for sure. Um, so yeah, it, it'd be an interesting kind of it'd be an interesting proposition. Um, but turning our focus back onto the Lions game itself, um, this is kind of two games now that the Bucks have played some actual comp and they've looked pretty bad. So is this becoming a trend for y'all? Um, Zach, we'll start with you. Is is this a trend? Unfortunately, that the Bucks just can't really play well against good teams yeah i don't know because i really did like i guess i expected them to play better against buffalo or against uh detroit so like i don't want to say it's a trend because the two good teams we've played are two polar opposite teams i think that the the issue is like these are the games that count the most and the fact that we can't pull up any like upset wins, we all felt really good after the Minnesota win. Right. And then it turns out that Minnesota is a trash team this year. Right. Even worse. Like, than yeah. It doesn't feel good anymore. So the fact that like the lions, in my opinion, I think I said it last week was like a make or break game for us. If we can beat the lions or even have a close game, it would have made me feel more confident. Um, so at this point, I don't know if I'd say it's a trend, but it's it's frightening. For sure, yeah, it's it's a bit concerning. Um, so Musabra, you kind of in that same boat. It gets it's pretty concerning, or maybe you're like, hey, let's pump the brakes. The Bucks are still in the NFC South. They're still bound to win the division if they just beat the teams they're supposed to. But you know, maybe you're still concerned. Yeah, I know. I mean, I'm I'm definitely concerned. Yeah, I I am still optimistic about our. NFC South standing, but the problem is, Carter, we don't look remotely competitive against top teams, and that's kind of the issue. Um, well, listen, it, it is what it is, is what I'm thinking when it comes to the Eagles, but yeah, this Lions game was embarrassing for me. It's the lack of momentum that really got to us, and, and it's just, I don't know, you know, the best way to describe our team is, I remember my cousin told me this because he used to play AAU basketball. He was like, man, I remember, you know, we used to play these horrible teams. We used to win just by 10 points. We'd have a little snack break and then boom, now we're playing like De'Aaron Fox and the rest of his <laughs> AAU team. And right. now we're losing by like 40 points and half the guys <laughs> are like six foot six and taller. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I kind of feel. Our team is just like, hey, we're beating bad teams, but then we're just getting – absolutely kind of demolished and 20 to six i know it could have been a lot uglier i guess too but we were overall just getting beat up on both sides we had a lot of well we were lacking a lot of momentum okay and the fact that our defense was on the field for 80 percent of the time basically uh affected us big time and that's probably a big reason as to why our defense did sloppy they still ended up doing pretty decent uh, i want to give a shout out to the people already Levante, David, can see, but still, um, I don't know. I think honestly, we are just, we're like textbook mediocre. You know, we're basically that team that say, Hey, listen, if you can beat us by a decent amount, then you're good. And if you lose to us by a lot, you suck. And if you have a good game with us, you know, maybe you lose by a field goal, then you're just going to be in the middle tier forever, or at least for the rest of the season. Yeah, a, a good way I like to think about it is like the NFC South, it, it's like we're Division II football. <laughs> like we are we are North Dakota State in that division where we go undefeated. We're going to win that division without a doubt. We're the greatest team in that division. But then we go and play like Alabama <laughs> or <laughs> like Oregon State. Like we we play these teams. Listen, they're ranked twelve. Don't uh, they're one below Alabama. All right, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but we go out and we play these teams that are in Division One, and we realize, oh, we are not that good. <laughs> like we were really good playing these D two schools, but now that we're playing these D one schools. We kind of are just trash. I wouldn't say trash, but not good. And it's I. I still think we win the division, but I see a first round exit. Like I have no Super Bowl aspirations, let alone a playoff win aspiration. I think we make the playoffs, which is cool, but kind of sucks because that gives us a shitty draft pick. But I do think that it we we get outed first round. Whoever wins the South, I think it's us, but whoever wins the South, I think is out first round. 
Yeah, I, I'm with y'all. Um, I, I, I like the D2 comparison because the NFC South is very much looking like a separate division of the NFL. Um, but what is D1 is uh, oh, uh, yeah, that's some D1 stuff oh, right there. That's oh. that's SEC or Oregon State, whatever you're not just D1, on. AP top 25. That's right, AP top 10, <laughs> I would say. That's, oh, okay, that's making the college football yes, playoffs indeed. right there. Um, but anyways, yeah, definitely check out shop.rblrsports.com. Um, you know, just we just got the best gear. We got Rays, Bucks, Lightning, Rowdies. If you're looking for some bring back the devil stuff, um, Lightning season's kicking back up. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, and obviously we're in the thick of things with the Bucks season. So um, we'll give you a promo code. It's Cannons, C-A-N-N-O-N-S. Type that bad boy in and you get 10% off everything on your order. Um, so after that shameless shop plug, we are back to the Bucks related topics. And before we get into it, I do want to ask, you know, I'm feeling pretty hungry right now. So I'm really excited for the, this game day snack discussion. Um, but what are y'all's game day snacks for this weekend's game against the Falcons? Um, Musab, we'll start with you because you've always got some heat on deck. So what, what are you grubbing on this Sunday when you've watched the Bucks falcons game? Well, I'll tell you this. After that Lions depressing loss, um, I figured as to why, you know, women tend to just devour a whole, what do you call, jug tub of ice cream when they, yeah, tub of ice, here you go, tub of ice cream when they break up with their boyfriend, they get dumped or whatever. I had me quite a number of brownies. And <laughs> uh, listen, whatever happens, whether we demolish the Falcons, we beat them, or we get demolished by the Falcons, you can catch me with a nice batch of Ghirardelli brownies from Costco for keeping the cost low. Not sponsored not, just not yet, sponsored yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna. I don't know. I mean, sure, I'll have like a normal lunch meal or dinner or whatever, but uh, you can catch me munching on those bad boys for most of the game with some milk, of course. Of course, yeah, man, that sounds delicious. Um, yeah, I, that that sounds awesome. Maybe you can just have a whole pan of brownies for lunch, you know. Who cares? No one's no one's here telling you that's wrong. At least I won't tell I'll, you. I'll probably get a lecture from my mom or dad about oh, I need to watch <laughs> my cholesterol, et cetera, et cetera. Well, but you're whatever. Old. You're too old for that. <laughs> it's a part of being an adult, mom. I can eat brownies whenever I want. I gotta yeah, tell my kids yeah, that all right. the time. When I get snacks and they don't, I'm like, look, I spent 18 years of my life not being able to have ice cream for breakfast. If I want it for breakfast, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, are, are you gonna have are you gonna have ice cream during the Bucks Falcons game, Zach? Or are you feeling uh, something? No, so ice cream was just a metaphor. I don't even actually like ice cream that much. <laughs> but but no, I, my my goal is to drive out to this beautiful little town of La Follette, Tennessee. It's like an hour and a half away. Uh, I work out there, so it's not really beautiful. I'm just out there every day. There's this little mom and pop owned bait shop that also has a grill in it. Like they cook food and they make one of the best Philly cheesesteaks I've ever had in my life. And I know that's – I've. Granted, I've never been to Philly. I've never had a real Philly. So uh, from a Florida boy to a Tennessee boy, like it's the best Philly I've ever had. And I'm going to try and talk Michaela into going out there because she loves it too. We've been out there a couple of times. And it, it's just this little place called Judy's. They sell bait out of the back and cook in the closet. So <laughs> it's, it's pretty fire though. That sounds like a very uniquely Tennessee experience. So I, Oh, it I, is. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life when I first went in. Like you have to get over the fact that there's no gloves or anything and they're oh. just cooking. And I, dude, I'm telling you, you go into a place that's not wearing gloves and they're just cooking their hearts out. It's the best food you will ever have. It's, yeah, it's I, usually I, the places, it's usually the places where you don't expect some food to be fire that it, it tends up to be fire. Cause I remember I used to work uh, up in Boston at this hospital and there was this kind of shady looking gas station, but Oh man, I remember they used to have the most delicious fried chicken. And I remember the guy couldn't even speak English or something, but he just knew I wanted that fried chicken every time I walked in that bad boy. So, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I'm going like, to have to stop by Judy's if I'm ever up there. Okay. Hey, yeah. come on. I will gladly take you all on the trip to Judy's, man. Judy, if you're listening to this, maybe you can uh, give us a sponsor. Judy's <laughs> <laughs> Bait and Tackle, La Follette, Tennessee. Come on. Uh, we need you as a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get them on. Uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds delicious. I'm not going to lie. Philly cheesesteak sounds busting. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I had some etouffee this week. My mom was was gracious enough Ooh. to make it. 
and that was delicious. I've already eaten through all that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know how that is. Uh, and then I had some pulled pork nachos uh, yesterday that were actually really good because my mom made pulled pork. And I put those bad boys over some tortilla chips and some cheese, put it in the oven. Whew. Delicious. Um, but this Sunday, I'm probably going to I might be in the press box, fortunately. So I'm probably going to be grubbing on some Cubans, um, some little Cubanitos, some little Cuban sandwiches. I'm pretty hyped for that. Um, but there's also uh, usually like a, either some ribs or a, or a steak and chimichurri sauce thing that they got up there. So I'm actually pretty excited about that as well. Uh, that's the best part of the press box is the free food. Um, not going to lie. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but anyways, after our little you know, grubbing session or imaginary grubbing session, whatever you want to call it. Um, well, we're going to talk about the NFC South because my goodness, not only did the Bucks lose, everyone in the NFC South lost. The Saints, Falcons, Panthers, all four teams lost. So is this, I mean, I know we made the Division Two comparison, so I think we can aptly say that they're the worst division in football, but I want to confirm it. I, I think they're the worst division in football. Um, Zach, you're saying yes. Musab, is this the worst division of football? Most definitely. Uh, it's embarrassing or I don't even know what to say. More than embarrassing. It's just odd. We're the oddballs. If you even think about it, you know, there's there's a couple conferences in the, you know, in the D1 division that are just kind of there. You know what I'm saying? They just right. exist, but they're never going to be relevant. You know, they're never going to be top 25. Like that Sun Belt Conference. I don't even know. Yeah. You know what Mountain I'm saying? West conference. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> Oregon State's about to be in the Mountain West. Don't talk shit yet. <laughs> I'm oh, so shit. sorry. I know this is the Bucks podcast. I apologize. <laughs> I <always read> that. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about a lot of college football in this episode. But yeah, I'm with you. It is. They're almost the American conference. You know, shout out USF Go Bulls. Uh, yeah, just a lot of really bad teams. And um, it's depressing. It's hard to watch. Um, yeah, because the matchups aren't fun either. Like the Bucks Falcons game this weekend, we'll get into it. But I, or like the Panthers Falcons or whatever the Saints play. I mean, it's all just kind of boring. You know, it's not very good football. Um, so yeah, it's definitely the worst division in football. And I I know this would be bad for the Bucks, but I really like every year. It seems like there's at least one division that's this bad. You know, and I just. It's, I feel like it's a matter of time before the NFL kind of adopts the NBA way of doing things and kind of has like a one through six maybe and just takes the six best teams from each conference. I think that would definitely do a lot of good. Um, just make for some more entertaining playoff football as opposed to having to watch like that the Super Bowl year, the Bucks played the Commanders and like the Commanders were terrible. They were below 500. They were a horrible team. So, yeah, I think that this is kind of another reason why the, the NFL needs to step in and change some things. Um, yeah, anyway. I, I could not agree with you more. Sorry, I know we were going to move on, but I think that is the perfect fix for, like, some of these just crappy playoff teams. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, as a Tampa fan, Tampa does not deserve to be in the playoffs right now. No, not at all. So, yeah. Like, I love that they're going to be. Like, that's awesome. I, I want nothing more than to watch extra Tampa Bay football. But realistically, there's going to be a team with a winning record that doesn't get in because Tampa gets in with a maybe winning record, but probably a worse record than some of the teams that get left out. So I think uh, even if they do like a – still have the wild card, like a, a play-in, you know what I mean? Like, it, there needs to be something that says, all right, we got the East and the – or we got the East and the West. This is how we're going to do it. Eight teams get in. We have two teams that play off for a, like a wild card, and then everyone else plays. Yeah, or they could even maybe uh, we're getting into some some playoff proposals. I dig this. Um, we could maybe they could maybe even just maybe they can't entirely abandon the division format, but at least reseed. Because like if the like let's say whoever ends up ends up coming out of the NFC South, they're not only going to make the playoffs; they're going to get a playoff home game. Like, that's not cool, you know? They don't exactly. deserve that. Like, it's just kind of tough. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you. It's definitely it's something that needs to be addressed uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but some other news kind of in the Bucks circle. Um, Baker Mayfield experienced that injury on Sunday. Um, it was kind of, an, uh, kind of a hand injury, upper body injury. He was bleeding, apparently. How concerned does this make you going into the Falcons game about Baker's health? Um, Musab, we'll start with you. I mean, are you worried about this Baker injury? Well, I believe it was, yeah, it was the non-dominant hand. Right. Um, and, 
I don't think he was listed on the injury report. No, he was um, not. No, so. yeah, as of Thursday, October 19th. So, right, right. Uh, I mean, for me, it's still concerning just because of what's happened in the past. But it's not something I'm thinking about too much, to be honest. Um, what I am worried about is kind of our, our strategy and what is, what is Baker going to do for us. And, I mean, that's, that's just for the whole team. So, it's not just Baker. I'm worried about – a lot of guys on our team. So yeah, I'll leave it at that. That's a fair response. You're, I think we're all a little worried about a lot of guys on this Bucks roster right now. Um, so yeah, that's a fair response. Um, the non-dominant throwing hand, that's a key point. Um, because, you know, if, if it's the throwing hand, yeah, that's ugly. That's terrible. He probably has to come out of the game on Sunday if it's his throwing hand. Um, but fortunately, since it's not, hopefully he can fight through um, it does, you know, he's a very mobile guy. He likes to kind of get in there and get his hands dirty, so to speak, literally and figuratively. So that's a bit concerning for me. You know, maybe he doesn't have those, you know, signature Baker. Uh, they call him the angry runs, the weird anger. Weird, yeah, it's a weird name for him. But um, yeah, Baker has a lot of those. So I think it may reduce some of those. But Zach, how about you? You're the biggest Baker Mayfield fan that I know. So I'm sure you're you know, praying to, to whatever deity there is uh, to, to heal his hand. Um, so does this injury concern you or maybe you're kind of like Musab and you have a lot of other concerns about the Bucks? I think I'm more on Musab's page. It, it would have bothered me more had they said something about it or something more been brought up about it, but I haven't even read anything about it outside right. of what you told me. Like, it, to me, if it were a bigger deal, they would have made a bigger deal out of it. It would have been on the headlines and everything. So for me, I'm not worried about it, especially I think you touched on it perfectly. The fact that it's his non-throwing hand is – or non-throwing arm makes me feel ten times more confident because the injuries that he's had in the past have been to his throwing shoulder, if I'm not mistaken. Right. So had it been, you know, coming up gimpy or holding that throwing arm awkward, I would have been more worried, but now I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm with you. I definitely it's it's like you said, it's it's nice that it's not a, like a reoccurring thing that's been, you know, part of his kind of shtick, so to speak. I hate that. I don't want to say shtick. That sounds bad. But, you know, part of his deal is it's a, a previous yeah. injury that's flaring up. Um, it's not that. So that is very nice to hear. Um, but, you know, it's still an injury nonetheless, and it's still something maybe to keep an eye on come Sunday. Um, another thing to keep an eye on, in my opinion, and I want to hear y'all's thoughts on this, is how much, you know, the Falcons are not in a great place right now. Desmond Ritter looks rough. Um, the offense looks bad. The defense kind of up and down. So is there any chance that this could maybe be a letdown game? I mean, I know the Bucks have played some pretty bad teams to start the year, obviously the Vikings and the Bears. Um, so they've been able to avoid that pitfall. But um, do you think maybe that this has a chance to be a letdown game? Zach, we'll start with you. Uh, if the, if you do think so, how do you avoid it? Um, but maybe you're like, no, it's a division rival. Like they're not. It's not going to be a letdown game. They're going to take this seriously. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're going to take it seriously. I don't think there's been a game that we haven't taken seriously. If of that course. makes sense, right? But it, it worries me because it feels like a trap game, right? Like. Everyone knows that Tampa should win this game. Hell, I think Vegas has us as two and a half point do uh, favorites. Yep. Everyone knows Tampa should win this game, but that's why it scares me because with everyone knowing Tampa should win the game, that's bad juju, and Atlanta is going to make it a close game, and it's just it's going to be uncomfortable the entire game until the final whistle blows. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be kind of a, a white knuckle thing. Um, I don't yeah. Think going to be a blowout um we saw how about you do you maybe see it more like oh this isn't a trap game at all it's a division rival like who cares but or maybe you're kind of with zach and you're a little concerned about it yeah i'm a little concerned about it i think we're going to take it seriously for sure um i mean i think for us to let you know let the fans down and let themselves down is you know by not causing disruption on desmond ritter who is very inconsistent and just getting toyed around in the offense. Um, I don't think too much of their defense. I know they're pretty solid, I guess. But I just think that as long as we don't make the same kind of mistakes like we did against the Lions, I think as long as we, 
you know, are actually playing smart on the offense. You know, we're not exhausting our defense. I think we should be fine. I don't think it's going to be a trap game, but, I mean, I'm with you guys. I don't think it's going to be a blowout either. Uh, I think it's going to be a real close one for sure. And um, I don't know. I think it's going to go a little bit back and forth for sure. Yeah, back and forth. Uh, yeah, that's it's definitely – I don't see foresee it being a very uh, a very wide margin that if the Bucks do win that they win by. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely just have to see. Um, but speaking kind of in that same vein, um, what are some things that you look at this Falcons team and you're like, oh, that's that's actually something they kind of do well. Like maybe this will give the Bucks some problems. Um, for me, it's definitely on the defensive side of the ball, more specifically their secondary. Um, you know, they've got Jesse Bates, AJ Terrell. Um, those two guys are really, really good. Two of the best at their position. Um, so I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that maybe that they give Evans and Godwin some trouble. Uh, maybe they force Mayfield Baker to hold on to the ball a little bit more. Um, so I don't know. That's definitely something I think that the Bucks should be looking out for. Um, Musab, how about you? What, what's something that you look at this Falcons roster and think, oh, this is actually something that could give the Bucks some trouble? I think if they uh, get into a rhythm, at least on the offensive side, I mean. We know what Desmond Ritter is capable of doing. I think that, you know, especially that uh, end the game against the Texans, for example, you know, he knows how to get the guys the ball and all that. And I think they do have some weapons all on offense. You know, they got a pretty solid duo with B. John Robinson and Tyler uh, Al Algier. Yeah, Algier. Algier, yep. And then, I mean, what, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, even John U. Smith we can toss in there. Uh, so Patterson as well. So, I mean, they do have the weapons that could allow them to win for sure. And I think that's something we need to just kind of be wary about. Um, I don't know, just not playing sloppy, of course, as well. Um, hopefully, you know, their offensive line doesn't kind of just completely shut us out. I don't think they will, but anything's possible. And um, I guess that's why it's going to be a good matchup. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for this matchup. Um, it's, it should be a really fun game regardless. Of course, I said that last week about the Lions. <laughs> but what the hell do I know? Um, <laughs> but, uh, Zach, how about you? What are some things that you look at this Falcons team and think and they, things that kind of give you pause when it comes to this matchup? Uh, yeah, I mean, the the main one is Bijan Robinson. <laughs> I mean, there's they have weapons on offense. Musab had touched on it, you, you know. Drake London, when he's goes off, he goes off. Like he's one of the best in the league when he goes off. That's the problem is he doesn't go off very often. Um, Bijan Robinson is averaging five yards a carry. Uh, that almost doubles Rashad White. Just got to throw that in there. Um, but anyway, he, he's averaging five yards a carry. And the fact that they have another running back who is also averaging over four yards a carry, or I think he's at three, eight, sorry. Um, that running back duo is is going to be potent and it's going to be scary, uh, and I just I'm I'm worried about that and Kyle Pitts being covered by Devin White because his his pass coverage is not great. Yeah, and Kyle Pitts, if used properly, which the Falcons haven't really been able to do so far in his career, yeah. um, he can be a really dynamic weapon. And um, he finally scored a touchdown this season. Uh, I have him on one of my fantasy teams, unfortunately, so. He got off that schneid or got whatever you want to call it. Um, so, yeah, I'm with you all. The, the the weapons, they've spent three first-round picks in consecutive years on skill position players. So they better damn well have some good weapons. Um, otherwise, they have to really reevaluate what they do. Um, so, yeah, I think those are some really interesting points. Um, definitely going to be a really good game. Um, but, Zach, to throw it back to you, uh, you have an over-under stat or two for us, right? Yep. All right. So I'm going to stay away from the run game. I'm not dealing with that today. I can't handle it. I'm done with it. Under. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Over, under two and a half turnovers this week. Total from both teams? No, no, oh no. On just Tampa getting two or two and a half takeover or takeaways. Okay. From the Falcons. Okay. From the Falcons. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, I'm going to go under. I don't think that they can force over two and a half. I think they might get an interception or two from Ritter, um, but I do, it would be hard to get over two and a half. So I'm going to go under on that. 
Yeah, my hot take is I'm, I think it's just going to be two max. I think things are going to change a little bit towards the end of the game, and I don't think we're going to be applying too much pressure for which that reason. I think it's just going to be two no, two turnovers at max. Could be less, too. Okay. Yeah. All right, Zach, how about you? I'd say I'm, I'm a little different than you guys. I'm going to go over. I have, mm. I have two interceptions and a Drake London fumble. Oh, a Drake London okay. fumble. Yeah, wow. calling him out like that. Okay. Yeah, well, good no, no, I'm not calling him out. I think he's he's going to have a good game. I really do against Tampa. But I, I think that they get him the ball too much, and it's just one of those, as he's falling to the ground, someone punches it out, and we get the ball. I, I don't know why I have that feeling. That's just a feeling. If it happens, I'm, I'm going to start betting whole paychecks on stuff. <laughs> but, I think it's – I think it's because there was a Drake album that came out this past week. So maybe there that's we go. Yeah, yeah. I do. Y'all know how much I love Drake. For sure. Um, You're a huge Aubrey fan. I know. Uh, <laughs> my my other one is over under 350 total yards of offense for Tampa. 350 and a half, sorry. I might need a minute to think on this one. We saw Ooh, yeah, because you said because you said yeah, total. I was just thinking at first you were just gonna go to Wars Baker, but uh uh you know what? I'm gonna go under on that. I think uh for me, my prediction is I think we're gonna fire on all cylinders in the beginning, maybe a little bit towards uh the third quarter ish, but I don't know. For some reason, guys, I just think that our fourth quarter is not gonna be as pleasant or as satisfying as we'd expect that's why i'm thinking under yeah i'm gonna have to side with you musab i gotta go under as well i hate that we're going under on both but <laughs> that's just you know that's, that's how it be sometimes you know that's how the cookie crumbles um so yeah i'm gonna go under as well um i think that they get enough we'll, we'll get into the predictions for scores but i think i just i think that the bucks aren't you know, one of those high powered offenses. That's just not how this team is built. Um, so I'm going to go under on the, on the total yardage. Um, oh, Ooh, is he going to give us a, is he going to give us a stat prediction as well for the over under? Hey, do you think, do you think that Tampa has over 350 yards this week? No, no. Oh man. Another so under. Man. How many yards do you think they're going to have? Five yards. Oh, Right. Yikes. Oh, he doesn't watch very much football, boys. That's okay. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> so, Zach, what's your over under? I'm I'm also gonna go under on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's gonna be closer to 280. Between 280 and 300 is my my prediction. So I'm I'm going under. I, I think we do enough. Like I said, we'll get into the predictions later, but I think we do enough to win, but it's not gonna be it's not going to be a huge blowout win. All right. I'll, I'll throw it right back at you. What's your prediction for the game, then? My prediction is 17 to 10 Tampa wins. Okay. Fair enough. Short and to the point. I dig it. Musab, how about you? What's your uh, what's your score prediction? I'm going 24-20. Uh, I think it's uh, somewhat high scoring. I think at least we lead by a lot, but Falcons catch up, but they don't catch up enough, leading us to a win. 24-20 bucks win. All right, 24-20. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go 17-13. Uh, and I'm going to go Falcons. I I think Oh. Oh. oh my I know, god. I, know. I, I hope I eat my words. I would love to eat my words because I hate the Falcons. I don't want to see them win, but I don't know. The, the the Lions game was just rough and um the offense looked really bad and I think the Falcons defensively are pretty good and I think that they're going to do just enough to kind of push them over the top. Um, I think they get a few takeaways uh, themselves. So that's kind of my prediction is the Falcons go on top uh, 17 to 13. But again, I hope I'm wrong and I could very well be wrong. I'm wrong way more often than I'm right, which is amazing. Um, Taylor, are the Bucks going to win this week? Yeah, let's hear his. Yeah. How much are they going to win by? Do you think 10 points? Ooh, 10 points. Okay. I dig that. I dig that. All right. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, there we go. I dig it. Uh, so now we've got all of our predictions in, even from the Blaine boys as well. Um, we appreciate y'all for coming on. Um, but we also appreciate our audience for listening, tuning in, uh, putting up with our shenanigans, our nonsense, and all that good stuff. Um, so we really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you liked what you heard, and if you want to see more of the Blaine boys, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. Um, give us a follow at RBLR Sports. 
on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. Um, you can see more of Zach Blaine on TikTok. He's always cooking some stuff up, some Bucks related content on there. Um, so we really appreciate it and uh, hope y'all tune in next week. Hopefully it's with a Bucks victory and not another Bucks loss. Uh, but as always, regardless, go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.